Hi, Harush. Hello, Natalie. Oh my God, you've just killed me already. <laughs> I knew you were going to do this to me. <laughs> Let me just start by saying, like, thank you so much for being here. I personally, and as well as the brand, but I personally am so excited to meet you. Like, thank we've you. been looking forward to this for a long time. I'm really open to doing podcasts and YouTube videos now, so. You are indeed, and this is yeah. going on YouTube, so yeah. hi. I'm just sat on YouTube with Harouche. This is like a life moment right Wait, now. Wait, if it's, this is going on YouTube, you know what okay. you have to do. Oh my God, I know what I have to do. Wait, <laughs> I was singing it. Wait, ready. oh my God, I can't believe okay, I'm doing ready? this moment. Sorry to everyone listening. This okay. is a special YouTube moment, but we're going to do it. Okay. Am I going to get it right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you when. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, my friends, my little YouTube friends. Yay. See, you know I know. I knew. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> We've literally known each other two seconds and already I'm in yeah, love, honestly. Yeah, we're bonding. <laughs> I knocked the mic away. I'm so sorry. She's very Sorry, Sam. I'm very, honestly, that's really got me excited. So I don't even know where to start. That's just blown me away. But I kind of want to start at the beginning of everything with you. So one interesting thing I'd read about you was your name. Mm -hmm. Harush, obviously it's a beautiful name, but your name is said to come from your grandmother. Yes. And it means when fire and sweetness combine. Yes. Ooh, that's wow. a, yeah, how research. did you know oh, that? Yeah. Okay. Go, we do our research. <laughs> <laughs> but how yes. would you say that, like, portrays your personality? Are you fiery? Are you sweet? Um, yeah. I used to really dislike my name when I was younger mm -hmm. because I would get teased about it. I went to school with white girls and they couldn't pronounce Harush. Mm -hmm. And I used to like beg everyone to call me by my middle name and my parents would always tell me how special the name is. And when they explained to me like later on in the years, it means Haran in Armenian means fire. Nush is sweet. Wow. So together it means like fire and sweetness combined. And it's very true to who I am as a person. I'm very spicy. I'm very fiery and I'm very like kind and sweet at mm. the same time. So it's like the perfect storm. The perfect storm, the perfect combination. Yeah. Definitely. And I can see that in you. I mean, yeah. we're going to talk even more about that. But you mentioned there you're from Armenia. Yeah. And you've spoken a little bit about your childhood, but I'm interested to know what your upbringing was like before you kind of, before you became Harush as mm -hmm. you are now. Like, Yeah. So my upbringing, I moved to America when I was like five or six. Okay. And I was born in the Soviet Union, so if you guys aren't familiar with mm. that, I was born in a communist country. Right. So I don't really remember much. I just remember things that my mom would tell me mm. about it and be like, you used to want more milk and we couldn't give it to you. Like, no matter, like, how much money you had, it didn't right. matter because communism, they give you a ticket for something and then, like, that's all you have and that's it. Wow. Or, like, if you wanted a cucumber or a sausage, mm -hmm. like, anything like that, like, you weren't able to get it. And I think that, like, really bothered her as a mother. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I think what that did to her is when we moved to America was, like, anything you want, you can have it. Wow. Like, seeing, like, your children go through that where I have a brother, too. And we came to America illegally. And... um it was a very big struggle for my dad. Mm -hmm. He worked four jobs. I remember, like, living in the hood when I was, like, younger. My parents didn't have money. My dad didn't have money to buy a Christmas tree, like, some Christmases. So, like, I think, like, watching my father come from nothing, he came to America with $40 in his pocket and supported six people. Wow. And just seeing how he grew his empire, like, really – just like enthralled me and I was like, oh, when I get the opportunity, mm -hmm. I'm gonna grow mine. Like I'm gonna take care of my parents the way they took care of me. So I think a lot of my success is due to like the way my family raised me was kind of like you have to work hard for everything. Mm. And I mean, look at you now, you clearly have. I mean, fast forward to where you are now. You are a celebrity makeup artist known for creating and painting the most talented famous people in the world near mm -hmm. enough how did that all come about how did you become the celebrity amazing makeup artist that you are my story is so long oh, and i'm here after all day <laughs> like we can clock off whenever <laughs> it's super long but let's just say i've paid my dues on another yeah. level i started doing makeup when i was 17 and i'm 32 okay so, so you've been working a long time yeah and, and a lot of people like i feel like when they look at someone they're like oh, it just happened overnight. It's like, mm -mm. no, nothing ever happens overnight. Like a 
Rome was not built in one day. And I think a lot of people, like, for example, like, I'm just going to use Cardi B, for example. When mm-hmm. people look at her, they're like, she got lucky. I'm like, yeah. How many albums has she dropped independently and, like, paid for herself? And, like, the hours that she's worked to get where she is, like, just because she had one good song, like, that blew her up doesn't mean that, like, it happened overnight. Yeah. So I think, like, with me... For years and years and years, I would take anyone that would let me do their makeup and practice. Like, for me, doing makeup was, like, therapeutic at the time. And I would charge $40 in my bedroom. That's how I started. Wow. And I'm so sorry for any of you that are watching that let me do that to your face. <laughs> I didn't believe you could have ever. I mean, I'm sure it's always been amazing. I know, but like when I look back at pictures, like you did my makeup. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> like, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. Yeah, just like Shaggy said. <laughs> that wasn't me. Do you have it on camera? That wasn't me. <laughs> but um, so like, I feel like I honed my talent like yeah. through experience and practice. And so then I started working in a salon and I started doing brides. Wow. And I was booked a year in advance. Like I was booked solid every single day for oh like a God. year in advance. And I did the year booking for about five years until I really wore myself down. I was about to say that's a lot. Like every yeah, day every for day. five years. Every day from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. I yeah. mean, that's, that's like what we'd say graft. Like that's hard yeah. work. Yeah, it is. Completely. I'm very grateful for that because it just showed me how to be an animal. And I feel like a lot of people, when they step into the industry, don't understand the hours and yeah. the power it takes to, like, you have to have this, like, type of, like, push power to, like, make it through this industry because everyone is working just as hard as mm-hmm. you are. No one fucking cares. Like, if you're sick, if you're this, if you're that, you just have to get your job done. Like, yeah. it's not like nursery school you know what I mean like to make it out here in these streets yeah is, yeah it's tough and everyone moves to LA like in hopes of like and in the dreams, dreams yeah. and like to do this and to do that but it's like when it comes to push and pull when they're put in the spotlight is like mm. can you handle the heat that's like been given to you now and I think during those five years what I learned was keep pushing mm-hmm. like don't look back it doesn't matter. Don't complain. Be grateful. You're blessed. Everything happens for a reason. Mm. And I think that mentality really helped me in what I'm in today because, like, so many things will happen. Like, I have to jump on a flight, for example, to Indonesia, come back for a day, go back to Indonesia. Like, and that, this is, like, a real story. Like, yeah. everyone's like, how are, you came back for 24 hours. I'm like, I had to to do something to work for for a job and then go back how does your body even do that like i don't know i don't know you just push through it you have to push through it and it's a blessing because Mm -hmm. i get to travel the world and i like get to learn from different cultures and i think like each time i come back from somewhere i haven't been i like learn so much about the culture in their beauty and then i like integrate that into my work where i'm like inspired by everyone so it's like even you, like, let's say I like your lashes. I'm like, okay, what lashes do you have on? And I'll, like, look into it. And then I'm always, like, evolving, always learning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think those five years taught me that, like, evolve, push, don't complain, blessed. And um, comes to the age of social media. Mm. And someone at the time was like, you should have an Instagram. Why don't you have an Instagram? I'm like, for what? <laughs> and I, I remember I had an ex-boyfriend at the time. I was like, I don't want you posting your pictures. I was with them for no like a really long time. Like, no, I don't want it. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, so why am I going to have an Instagram? They're like, post your clients. I'm like, but I'm already booked. Like, <laughs> I don't need any extra clients. Yeah, yeah I like, I can't, like, and I don't have time to even respond to, like, the people and, like, say, I, I can't do it. So I figured wow. out, like, this automated system online where people would go online and book their own appointments because I couldn't even take their appointments anymore. So I don't know. I just started posting the pictures of the brides and there was no Facetune back then. There nothing. was nothing. There was absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's only been about the past, like, what, three, four years? Yeah. And, like, maybe a bit more, but. So I started posting the brides and then I remember my first shout out came from 
Vegas Nay. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys know mm-hmm. who that is. She was so popular back then. Yeah. I mean, she still is. Um, she has like an incredible story and she's such an incredible woman and she's all about like girl power and I love that about her. She gave me my first shout out. So the next day I woke up and it was like 50,000 followers. And back Stop. then wow. to get that much, I was like, what's happening? <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, like that now. I posted four pictures. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. What's happening? And, and that's then, like when Instagram's just kind of really getting started as well. Yeah, so where the popular in, page still existed, all oh of that, God, yeah. like where you the still had algorithm. a chance to grow. Yeah. Grow. Um, <laughs> so I basically went ahead and started posting. Brands started reaching out to me, wow. and I was like, oh, I get it. Like, this I get what works. Instagram is. Yeah. So, like, I remember, like, my first brand that sent me, like, my free products was Tarte Cosmetics. Oh, yeah. And it's the first brand I did a collaboration with. No way. Yeah. And so I'm kind of, like, nostalgic in that sense. Like, if you're the first one to give me an opportunity, I'll make sure. Because it's such an authentic experience for two, like, aesthetics to come together. Yeah. Where, like, Tarte was the first one to send me, like, my first PR package. And I was like, oh, my God. And, like, I remember, like, getting it. I was like, wouldn't it be cool to make, like, a palette with them? And you kind of almost, like, have to, like, always be positive and just, like, put your thoughts into the universe of what you want. Like, so many people, I don't know, I've had, like, assistants in the past where, like, they just think so negatively. And it's Mm -hmm. like, but you're attracting that. Yeah. You have to speak into the universe what you want, and then it gives it to you. It's, like, really funny how God works. Like, anything you verbally ask for, you shall receive. And I think that, like, when I said that, like, fast forward to, like, years later, I was the first one that they did a collaboration with, and they let me, like, formulate everything, and the palette sold out six times, like, nationwide. It was, like, crazy. And I was like, oh, shit this is the power of social media. Yeah. But it wasn't until then that I realized that also when the video aspect came about Mm -hmm. Instagram, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to videotape the brides that I do because everyone could kiss my ass because I'm not like, (laughs) this is like, I'm the real motherfucking deal, bitch. Like, like. look at my shit up close. (laughs) So when I started posting the videos, the videos went viral. Wow. And I was, like, doing, like, you know, the contour stuff at the time when, like, not a lot of people were doing it. Yeah. It was not a familiar thing. And um, somebody reached out to me from a production team and was like, we have somebody from a reality show that would like to get their makeup done by you. And I remember the first day I was, like, booked. I had brides, and I was like, I can't cancel. I, I don't know who they're talking about. Yeah. Second time again booked and then third time it worked out and then I go and lo and behold Kim Kardashian walks in and I was like holy (laughs) shit (laughs) hi (laughs) like it was insane she's one of the kindest people I've ever met I feel like she has inspired me and just just hearing her talk about like her struggle and just seeing Mm -hmm. where she came from Mm -hmm. And what she made out of the hand that she was dealt mm. is so insane to me. I don't care what, like, when sometimes when people talk, like, bad about her, I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. Mm. Like, shut up. You're just a hater. Like, to me, it's like, you're such a hater. Like, look what she's doing now. She's, yeah. like, prison reform. She has a show on Oxygen talking about how she's getting people out. She's done so much for Armenia. Mm-hmm. Um what she's done for the culture she's put on. I have so much respect for her. Mm. And I think one big part of the career was meeting the family because it just, I admire them so much, just aside from like their makeup and their beauty. Like I admire them in a business standpoint Yeah. because they said, you want to make fun of us? Look what we're going to do. And look at them. Wait a second. Look at it now. Like, wow, that's insane Mm -hmm. because it's like, if you sat there and you listened to public opinion, mm. you know, doesn't really add up. Like, it's funny. Like, the public likes to build you up to tear you down. Oh, 100%. Build you up to tear you down. 100%. And they taught me that. Mm-hmm. So I, I think with that, I took that. And then I was like, I waited until I was ready to, like, really be in front of the camera because I was always, like, a behind-the-scenes girl. And one of my friends yesterday was saying, like, 
you know, everyone that's in front of the camera knows exactly who you are. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then the people that are the audience don't really know who you are yet. Like, it's whoever matters knows who you are. But yeah. then, like, the audience, the consumer doesn't really know who Harush is. So I think she's like, it's funny how this has worked out for you, how your YouTube has worked out, because, like, you know all the important people. Yeah. But it just, you never wanted to put yourself in front of a camera. And I don't know why that was ever it. Like, anytime, like, you see me on a show, like, I run away from the camera or... I just never had a desire to be center Mm. of attention because I just, I'm an artist. I'm a creator. I like to create. And I don't like criticism because that's when, like, the fiery (laughs) side comes out of me. And it's, like, where I can get myself into trouble sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, you know, it is what it is. Everyone has their positives and their negatives. And as long as you understand what you're bad si- bad qualities are mm. it's it's fine to me like i can't stand people that um for example they're like there's nothing wrong with me it's like oh you're a serial killer <laughs> that's what's wrong with yeah. you like, yeah like everyone you're... everyone's got their good and bad points yeah and like that's just being a human being like nobody is perfect and everyone's unique in their own special way and that's, yeah, of course. that's the best thing about but i think like to excel as a human being you need to know what those good qualities and the bad qualities are so you can work on both of them or balance them out or whatnot so I think with the family what they helped me do is like learn the business aspect of it Uh, and just their work ethic never seen anyone work harder than them I mean even as an outsider I think it's known like that's how I feel and I I don't know them you know I look at them and I I respect how much they do yeah but when you see it like up close it's like sleepless nights it doesn't matter like early mornings Nobody cares. Like, the world keeps going keeps round. Mm-hmm. And then, like, people that are just filled with excuses will not last. Yeah. So that's how I, how I ended I up mean, here. I could just carry on. I've got so many questions in my head, and I don't even know where to start. I think I'm going to start on, so you got that call. It, it's so funny that you had this call for that makeup job, mm-hmm. and you had to turn it down twice. Because, I mean, had you known, do you think you would have turned it down still? Absolutely not. I mean, it's Kim Kardashian. But do you would you say that was like kind of a pinnacle point in your career because you were working twenty four seven it sounds on yeah. doing bridal makeup um, you know busting your ass really yeah. to then okay you're doing makeup for Kim Kardashian like how yeah. was that first experience were you nervous when you met her how did the makeup oh, go yeah I think I forgot how to do makeup that day <laughs> and I probably drooled like three times <laughs> I mean I'd do the same fully yeah she is probably like one of the most beautiful faces I've ever seen in my Mm. entire life. And it's incredible that I've given, I've been given the opportunity to do makeup on such an iconic face. And like, it changed my whole career. That's what it did for Mm. me. It really did. Because here's a girl that's working like from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., ripping her ass apart. And then like social comes about. And yes, I had think a million and a half following mm. before that because of just posting the makeup videos and which is the incredible little tutorials. by the way because yeah. not like not many people can say that to build that yeah is amazing on its own yeah and then I had like the tart deal that happened to me yeah I had the tart deal mm. that happened to me but I think like what's funny about society is they need somebody big to like give you the stamp of approval yeah and what bigger stamp I mean you got it. Then, you got it. yeah, she, I mean, what she's done for the makeup industry is revolutionized mm. the whole thing. So it's like bigger than any other celebrity, in my opinion, because every other celebrity would shove their makeup artists in a closet. Mm. Their hair and makeup yeah. artists were supposed to be, be qu- like, be quiet. It's a secret. I woke up like yeah, this. Yeah, this is it. Definitely. You know, where she took it and she's like, here is mario dodanovic the artist behind it yeah Yeah. he created my look Mm -hmm. and like here's this person here's like i Mm -hmm. respect that so much because she wants everyone to grow and i think that's something that like has taught me with like my team so it's like when i take on makeup assistants i like grow them to be makeup artists Mm -hmm. and like they still work with me where anyone that I can't do because I'm busy doing other things it's like here use my makeup artist yeah because you trust them as well yeah and I've trained them so it's like the same thing 
And so how would you say your career kind of changed from that moment? You've just worked with Kim Kardashian for one time. You know, are you still then I'm working 24 hour yeah, days? I was still working 24 hour days because I was like, what if she hates it? You know, yeah. like I can't. And I was like, and I was so excited, but I didn't tell anyone. It was the wow. weirdest thing. How I didn't did you tell hold that anyone. in? I'd be phoning on my friends like, do you know whose makeup I just did? <laughs> no, I don't know why I didn't. Like everyone was so annoyed with me. Like, why didn't you say it? I'm like, and I've never signed an NDA like prior to that. Wow. So I was like, I don't know. I thought it was against me. <laughs> <laughs> and like. That's so good of you though. I know. And I remember like I worked with her for like month after month. And there was like pictures, even like paparazzi pictures. But I was so embarrassed to post them. Because, like, I was, like, I don't want to be, like, that you didn't annoying be person, that. Yeah. you know, like, because I know how it is, like, as a female, too. Like, it gets, like, annoying when people want to, like, take, take, take. Mm -hmm. And I never, like, wanted to come off as that because, like, that's not who I am as a person. And I, like, just appreciated just, like, the stamp of approval in mm -hmm. the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so then she, I, before me even posting her, she posted... Uh, contour picture and then tagged me and it went completely viral. I bet your Instagram just went crazy. Yeah, and like E! News picked it up and it was like this whole thing because like it was unblended contour. It was just insane. Like it's so funny like what happens when somebody big. Yeah, that gives, impact. That gives you that like she gave me the stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when that picture came out onto Instagram, what was like your family's reaction? What like what was their reaction? Because oh, I'm I guess so that was proud a big of deal. you. Like yeah, of course it was like because it's she's the it girl, mm. you know, to do makeup mm. on. And what like when like makeup artists like I meet them, they're like my dream is to do Kim. I'm like yeah, babe. Everyone's dream <laughs> is to line. do Kim. <laughs> like you have to work hard. Like everyone yeah. wants to do Kim. She is that girl that everyone wants to do her makeup. Mm -hmm. And now fast forward to like where you are now. I mean, starting a business is hard as it is, but you are juggling your businesses, you're juggling your makeup career, your YouTube, your music career, which we're yeah. going to get onto a little bit later. <laughs> but like, how do you manage your workload? Because I don't understand how we've even got you here today. Like, how have you got five minutes spare in the day for us? <laughs> well, it's not quite five minutes, but. I know. Honestly, I don't sleep. Really? I could believe, I mean, actually, I couldn't believe it because you look so good. So, yeah. But really? Yeah, I mean, when, what time was I responding to you? I need Erin in the background. Like, 3 a.m. LA time, and I was like, 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I have time to like respond to my messages and my emails wow. like when everyone's sleeping and like everyone stop like responding <laughs> yeah but I bet everyone wasn't responding but then. like I do have like I work with people like in the UK or like in the Middle East so yeah. it's like their Different time, time zones. and I think that's what like trained me to be up but like mm. I don't know like I just I barely sleep and I know it's like a bad thing but like I'm, I feel like I'm like a moon child. So like when it's like nighttime, I get so creative and it's like when I flourish the most and where all these like crazy ideas come to that. me. So it's kind of like when like all the world is sleeping, I'm like wide awake. You're wide awake, working. Like dreaming. Oh my word. So aside from like doing like the emails, that's where I like write down all my ideas and mm. I am like a very aggressive creative mind. So like I can have a hundred ideas in like one day, but I just make t sure to like write them down. And if I'm not going to like get any use out of it, I like will be like, hey, you should do this or like you oh, should wow. do that. Like and you sh and everyone's like so appreciative of it because they're like nobody else would mm, put somebody sure. else on. And I'm like, tomorrow I'll have 200 more, you yeah. know, like and I think wow. that's like a funny thing about like giving so much you receive back. Like I do like tell everyone like or like. I help out like my family or like mm -hmm. financially like if anyone like has asked me I'm very open-handed with that and people are like should you not manage it like more carefully and I'm like no because the more I give for some reason the next week it triples up oh my god like it's just like I don't know what it is I think like the universe when your hand is like open it, it's open to receive as well. Wow. It must be amazing from how you're talking to me before about like your upbringing and kind of what your family and what you went through to being in the position now where you can talk like that and you can give so much to your family and to, you know, your loved ones. Yeah. I think that's like, 
maybe the lesson that I need to needed to learn when I was like so young and have it like imprinted in my brain to be like very giving and helpful mm-hmm. to others because like you never know what somebody else is going through and it's a big deal for someone to even like ask you for help. Mm. And then talking more on the celebrity side of things again, mm-hmm. um, a lot of people want to know kind of what surgery or what work their celebrity icons or people they look up to have had done. And recently you spoke out about your own experience mm-hmm. with surgery yeah. and it wasn't a great experience as you know, as yeah. you've told. What made you decide to speak out about that? I think that um, surgery, whatever it may be, like something small to like fillers mm. or like sometimes people are like, I haven't had anything done. But it's like you've had fillers that's having something done. Mm. So like I think like a lot of people are on their righteous horse with like I'm natural. It's like I'm I'm going to be so like objective with this like and get my point across. Like when people are like I'm natural. You tweeze your eyebrows. No, you're not. Mm. You Shave your armpits. No, you're not. You dye your motherfucking hair. No, you're not. That is not natural. Natural is like if you want to be a full on feminist Mm. and like I've known and I admire some that are full-blown natural and like they stand on their words so like you can't be a convenient feminist whenever you want to hate on somebody else like Mm -hmm. and I think that whole thing is like bullshit all in itself like it's your life your choices so when people even like ask me like oh have you had work done it's like have you Mm -hmm. like you know Mm -hmm. what I mean like that's such a personal question like yeah There's different ways about, like, asking someone that question. And I think, like, a lot on social media when I see stuff like that, not even just, like, on my own page, it's, like, people are so rude. Like, it's, like, asking someone if they've, like, lost a loved one or something like that. Like, I think it's, it's a very, like, private thing. I think the reason why I spoke out about it was because I was such a pro plastic surgery Mm. type of person Mm -hmm. where it's, like, if something upset you, if your one eyebrow hair didn't stick up the right way, I would come up with the solution with surgery, like yeah. prior. Like I'd be like, mm, we can do this and we can do that and then na 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 na, mm-hmm. this and that. Until I took a, r- a ride on the plastic surgery train, mm-hmm. and I basically t- was 28 minutes off from losing my life. And it was the craziest thing that's ever happened to me my entire life, the most painful thing that I've ever gone through. And at the time, like, I remember, like, laying in the hospital bed and I was like, why me? Why did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. What did I ever do? I've never done anything bad to anyone. Like, what kind of karma is this? Mm -hmm. And I think, like, as time passed by, like, I remember, like, the first two weeks I was in the hospital... Like, they were tripping out because they thought I was going to die because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And I kept, like, declining. Uh, My left lung filled with water. My brain stopped working. My heart was, like, basically dropping and then, like, um, beating, like, faster. Like, Mm. the rhythm was, like, off. So I was, like, hooked onto a machine. So, and I remember the experience. Like, I was on Dilaudid, which is, like, a narcotic all on its own, like, which we'll talk about Mm. after this. Um, And I just remember, like, being dozing in and off and, like, just seeing everyone crying around me like I've, like, died or something. And I think, like, when I was in the hospital, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm very sentimental when it comes to like, family or friends. And I was like, I'm gonna really live out whatever I'm thinking like Mm. you know how we say we're gonna do like positive things like you'll say it but will you do it yeah you know or like we're all guilty of that yeah and it is like a common thing and it's human nature but I was like I'm really not gonna take like any second for granted like I'm going to work so hard the moment I'm out of this fucking bed Mm. And I'm going to graft, as you guys like to say it. Graft. Graft. (laughs) I'm going to hit bricks grafting (laughs) and fill my plate up with so many sides that I don't know which one to choose from because it's like I got everything taken away from me when I was in the hospital bed and I realized like my cash flow stopped. So I was like, oh, fuck. Like what if something happens to me? Like if I'm not present 
doing the person's makeup, I get no money out of it. Like, and then all these people are relying on me. How am I going to live like this? Yeah. Like, and now I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I couldn't walk at the time because, like, they drilled holes in my leg trying to, like, drain oh my, my entire body. Like, it was crazy. And, like, they were, like, talking about amputating my leg. And I'm like, how am I going to fucking do makeup with no leg? Like, these were, like, all, like, real things that happened to me. And I was so private about it. I remember, like, threatening my friends, if you fucking tell anyone to come to the yeah. hospital, I'll kill you. Like, I don't want anyone seeing me like God. this. And I'm very, like, I don't like to be victimized. Mm. And I'm a type of person that's, like, view me as like, a worthy opponent, not, like, someone you should be soft on. Like, I yeah. want to, like, experience, like, whatever is happening, like, fully don't think I'm weak or don't think mm. I'm sick. I can take it. And I think at that moment, I wanted to just fade away off of social media, and I did. I didn't post for months, mm. like, maybe half a year, over half a year. Mm. And people forgot about me. And it's just funny because it's like you wouldn't know how strange that feeling is because it's like just because I was sick and I was gone. But like people don't know that. And then I was like a little like miserable that way because I was like, yeah, why does no one care anymore? And I'm like, well, you dumbass, you didn't tell them what happened. Mm. You just faded away with no explanation. Obviously, they're going to be disinterested now. And I think, like, after getting better, fully getting better, is when, like, when I can talk about the situation without crying. Like, before, if you caught me a year ago, like, I'd probably be bawling my lashes off right now. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was like, I want to get to a comfortable place where I can talk about what happened to me in a very serious manner so I can spread a message versus, like, crying about it and then, like, letting people see me as, like, a victim or, like, oh, poor you, like... That's not like what I'm looking for. And I think that's what stopped me for a very long time because I posted about it a year after it happened. But then when I posted it, I noticed so many girls messaging me Mm. like I had a procedure scheduled. I canceled it. Wow. Thank you for like your post or just millions of people reaching out to me like about it. Like their dads died from what I had or like their child died from what, what they what I had. And I had septic shock um, the last, basically, in the hospital that I was at. No one had survived the level of septic shock that I've ever, like, that I had ever in the history of the hospital. So I was, like, the only one. And I remember, like, even when I was in the hospital, they sent, like, a choir and a priest to, like, pray over me. And I was like, no, I'm not dying. And it's funny, like, how you tell your mind, Mm. like, what's going to happen. Because, like, I remember the first day all the doctors were freaking out. They had to fly in specialists. And everyone's, like, you can overhear them talking because they think I'm, like, dozing off. Like, oh, she might die. She might die. Like, basically insinuating, like, get her business in order. There is a possibility she might pass. So when I, like, I remember hearing that, I was like, no. No, (laughs) that is not happening. This is not how I go down. And I just like fought through it. And so like one thing that like really helped me was a nurse came and talked to me and was like, look, like you're asking for a lot of dilated. Like I understand you're in a lot of pain because we can't really put you to sleep while we're doing the procedures. They were doing it while I was awake. God. But like... This narcotic is actually Mm. stopping your healing. And, like, a lot of the times when people get plastic surgery, they'll, like, get, like, written up Norco or Percocets or whatever. And you have to understand when you're taking that stuff and you're healing at the same time, you're not really healing. Your immune system is fighting the narcotic to, like, flush it out of your system versus, like, healing you faster. So if you can just ride with it, if that is the decision that you want to, like, make, you have to deal with the pain part of it like you should know it is very painful to get any 
procedure done, you feel like an elephant is stomping on you 24 seven. And that is something all doctors fail to tell you because Mm. it's like, no, you'll heal in two weeks. No, that means you'll heal in two months. Always take what they say with a grain Mm. of salt and really understand your body. Make sure you're healthy before you go Mm. in. Like make sure you get your full like body checked, your health, everything. If you have a cold, don't get surgery. Don't do anything because you never know what's going to happen. Because I went to sleep with my life what I thought was like the best version of my life and I woke up with it in shambles. So I would suggest you really do your research and I think that you should know what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. And if you're seeking to have plastic surgery for confidence purposes, that's not where you're going to find it. In fact, you're going to be more insecure after doing the procedure. I actually read that you said... um that beforehand, before getting into the surgery, you weren't sure yourself. And in your gut, you kind of knew something was wrong, but you went ahead with it anyway. And I think you also spoke about how social media maybe played a part Mm -hmm. in the reason why you were going to do, to have this procedure. Yeah. I think that, like, I didn't learn my lesson the first time because I remember before, like, I've had rhinoplasty. Okay. And, like, when people are like, Oh my God. I'm like, I'm very honest with anything I've ever done. Mm. Now it's everyone's decision to whether they want to share it with, it's their life. If they want to share it with you, then they shared it with you. If they don't want to share it with you, it's none of your fucking business. If someone wants to be open, like let them be. But like, I think like for me, what I want to be is like an example to younger girls where it's like, yes, I did get sucked into like the whole art of perfection. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I stood in a tornado and I like stomped my foot and I said no, which how many people can say that? Yeah. Um, I think that when I did rhinoplasty, it was like off of the comments on my Instagram where it's like, your nose job is botched. I'm like, but I don't have a nose job. (laughs) What? I know. That's crazy. What the fuck? Honestly, what makes people write those type of comments anyway just baffles me. But I think people have calmed down on social. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I've been fucking reading these bitches out on these streets lately, Mm, but like, and they're just scared to comment. But like before they used to ride me heavy and I would never like write back. And then now I'm like, Excuse me. What's people, wrong with you? Exactly. I don't think people realize that you're a real person. I think yeah. they, I don't think anyone would ever expect you to see that or for that to actually affect you. So when But it's like I'm not a celebrity. I'm not like aside even if I was a celebrity, they're still human beings. Like mm. words hurt and it's like no hurt people are. hurt people and mm-hmm. healed people he, heal people. Heal no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tongue twister. <laughs> hurt people hurt people and healed people heal people. So yeah. if someone's like upset with their nose, at that time I didn't think of it like that. Like they would come on, now come on to my page and be like, oh, maybe I want my nose to look like her nose. And then like mm. they'll get like, they'll want rhinoplasty. And yeah. that's where their comment would come about. But like I didn't look at it like that at that point. I was like so insecure about it. I'm like, what's wrong with my nose? Like, and, like, I went to a doctor. They did my nose. But thankfully, I, like, healed so fast from yeah. it. But then now I can't breathe out of my right, like, nostril. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, it's, like, where that. I never had a problem before. Now I can't. And now you do. Yeah. It's, like, why did I do that? Just like, scary. it literally looks almost exactly the same. Like, if anything, my nose was more straight, which I, like, contour it to be more straight now. Yeah, yeah. And then they just, like, lifted the tip a little bit. And the funny thing is I did this, like, little experiment on social when I posted the before and after. And then – but I did it, like, the opposite way. And they basically said that my real nose was the nose job. And then the fake nose was the natural one. And that the natural one looks so much better. And I was like, you guys are all a fucking handful of idiots. (laughs) That's what you are. Like, that's actually the fake one. Thank you very much. Like, and I actually did that like a year ago. And I was like, I just want to prove a point. Yeah. Like like how small minded some people could be. Yeah. That was like the first time. And then I was like, oh, it wasn't that hard because it wasn't 
to me getting my nose done like they didn't break my nose so maybe that's why it wasn't painful mm. but it was like a walk in the park and yeah. i was like oh yeah Impensive. i've done plastic surgery like no big deal like you know and i had a breast lift and a reduction off of like people always just being like oh your boobs are saggy or they're this they're that like they're too big you look trashy. You look like a whore all the time. I'm like, what do you want me to do? I'm a thick girl. Like, mm. I can't. What do you want me to change about my body? Like, if a flat chested girl wore the same top as I did, mm. it's not trashy mm. and it's not classless. But then, because somebody has bigger boobs, you can point your finger at them and be yeah. like, you're trashy, you're classless. So I think, like, when I went to the doctor, I was like, I want a flat chest. Like, that's what I want. Wow. Yeah. Which is crazy for like someone like me to, because I'm like, uh, it's always the opposite, isn't it? I'd, yeah. I'd kill for you. I feel like thing. women always want what they don't have. Yeah, we do. So I just had like a weird feeling that day. I don't, I just wish I went with my intuition. Like, mm. and I always now, I think one thing that it showed me is like always follow my gut. Now, like, let's say if I stood in front of the door and my like intuition was like, don't go inside. I'd be like, sorry, I can't come inside. I got to go. I'm not saying, like, ride your crazy horse and, like, you know, like, make up reasons. But mm. then there's, like, sometimes, like, I'm sure you've experienced it, yeah. too, where your mind is telling you to stop doing something. You should always listen. Mm. That day it was that my mind told me not to go into surgery and still yeah, sucked it up and did it. Woke up, fucked up, not feeling good. I've never felt like that in my entire life. Mm. I don't really remember much. But I remember the third day, like, it was, like, horrible. And I had about almost, like, seven mini seizures, like, unintended. And, like, everyone was just like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like, what? Maybe you're just not used to the pain you haven't had, like, you know, because, like, a breast lift and a reduction is they, like, cut so much, like, muscle mass out. And they're like, oh, it's probably you've never had, like, stitches before like that. Like, just, it's fine. You'll be fine. Oh, my God. And so it was ignored for 11 days. That's why, like, I had septic. I had sepsis. And then since it was unattended, it turned into septic shock. So I was basically in septic shock for one full day where people die, like, minutes into having Mm. it. Like, my body was in full shock for longer than 24 hours. It's shocking. I think it's actually really important, like, for you to discuss it. I guess that's kind of why you spoke out about it. Because people just don't realize and go into these things. And I think that's the reason why I went public is yeah. because I want people to see the silence side of it too. Like yeah. a lot of people are ashamed to talk about it. And I was too at one point. I was like, I don't want anyone to know that I'm in the hospital because of plastic surgery. Because mm. they're going to be like, well, you fucking deserve it, you know? No. no. And it's like, that's how I was looking at it. But I was like, no, like so many women, especially because of like social media, yeah. don't understand the dangers of it. Mm. Like if you understand fully what you're putting on the line, which is your life. And you're willing to risk it. And- it is your life that you're yeah. putting on the line to go under anesthetic and to change one thing about yourself that I promise you, you're not going to be even happy about. Like, anytime you yeah. do a procedure, I've never met one person that's like, I'm fully happy with something, you know? I think what this whole experience taught me is, like, what I was seeking aesthetically was inside of me. Mm. So it's like, mm. I was seeking confidence because I wanted to look perfect. But, like, perfection is within and no one's really yeah. actually... Perfection doesn't really exist. Perfection is just you every day waking up, working on yourself, mm. and just learning to do better and like being kind to yourself first and then to others i mean just hearing that firsthand like i mean it's a completely scary experience that you've gone through and i mean i'm so glad to be sat with you now and to know that you're Thank better you. and you've overcome and i got alaya after and you've got, did you is yeah. that when yeah i'm so alaya's alaya is harish's dog that we've got on set with us she's so beautiful she's just chilling in the arm if you can't see us right now and you're listening to the podcast <laughs> i love her so much but on again the note of everything that you kind of went through you commented on it in your brand new single yeah. wish and well which yes. i am obsessed with can you refresh my memory on the lyric yeah, that of is course. about that um in my blacked out truck moving like an icon when the shit got rough had to switch my lights on because i made a couple plays almost lost my life on now i gotta fucks with it if i spend my time on 
I mean, can I get a clap in the studio? <laughs> I've wanted to hear that firsthand for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, firstly, congratulations on your Thank first you. ever single, which I swear I'm obsessed with. But yeah. that line, that was that was powerful. It was deep. It, yeah, it's very, the whole song is super deep. And I think like everyone's like, it's a bop. And I'm like, but it should have been a ballad. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if Lana Del Rey sang her ass off <laughs> with like that, those lyrics, everyone would be like, oh my God, it's so deep. If you actually listen to the lyrics, it's a really deep rap song. Um, mm. It's talking about like finding yourself and just being in a place where you don't wish ill will on anybody. Yeah. And um, I think for me, that part was so important to put in because it's true. Like I made a couple plays, almost lost my life on. Mm. So I put my life on the line for beauty for no reason. And... Now I gotta fucks with it if I spend my time on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I absolutely love it. What was the song about when you did write it? Cause I've heard you speak about it as well, about the different lyrics and what they mm. each kind of mean. But was it kind of like a clap back to the haters, like wish and well? Yeah, it was. Because I think I was silent for so long after what happened. Like I put yeah. out my story and then everyone, um, you know, public opinions from private accounts, mm. you yeah. know. Everyone had something to say, and honestly, at first I was like, I don't want to read any of these comments, but then when I started reading and I was like, wait, there's so many people that can relate to me and that I feel like I affected, so I started like yeah. responding to people and like really built like strong relationships with people that like follow me. It like started off with just like literally the chorus, and then we were just going to put it in for like Instagram advertising. Mm. And it was actually not even supposed to be me that was supposed to be on it. No way. And then my business partner was like, can't you fucking rap? <laughs> you do it all the time anyway. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I'm not a singer. I'm not a rapper. He's like, no, I feel like you are. Stop. And then he's like, just try it out, whatever. So then one of my closest friends, their baby father is an artist developer and I was like, hey, I need to like do this jingle. Um, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> and he's like worked with like really big names in the rap industry and he's like, finally, like he's like, you have so much fucking swag and attitude more than yeah. any man I've ever fucking met. Like the way you dress to the way you talk, the way you respect people. You're like a cool cat on the street. <laughs> and then he's like, get in the booth and try to freestyle. I was like, I don't know how to do this. He's like, just talk your shit. Like, just talk. Like, and then I'll make oh it all God. work and I'll show you how to do it. And I was like, okay. I did it. And then he like made these other producers listen to it. They're like, oh my God, she's like onto something. Wish Him Well wasn't the first song I recorded. There's more. Yeah. Hold on. So, like, the one that they held back is, like, something that they want to, I guess, create, like, an album and put it in there. It's a really good song. And it's a really deep song. But it's, like, 160 bars in a song where oh it's kind of, like, Eminem style. Like, but then, like, I was, like, I just want to put out something that I know is a bop. People are going to like it first. Yeah, yeah. Versus, like, going in with a heavy hitter like mm. that. And it's, like, so deep, and it's, like, talking about, like, dark experiences and this and that. Wow. So, like, I just want to, like, put out something positive, like, make it light. And then I met, I don't know if you guys know who Queen Herbie is. Yes. She's an insane lyricist. She's on your YouTube. Yeah. I've seen her. So, I met with her, and I told her, I was like, hey, like, I want to make a song. Like, I want it deep. But I don't want it, like, too deep where people get confused because, like, I have another deep one coming. Yeah. But I just want to ease people into my personality first. Like, I want to be like, hee, 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 hee. <laughs> like, come to the dark side. <laughs> Not really, but like, you know, like, let me like just show you the light, like, yeah. and the air in your ways. Me and her, like, we started talking about it and then wish them well. The lyrics are so dope. They're so cool. They and I can't believe, like, when I like hear it in a club, I'm like, I can't believe this is my song. Like, and to think I wasn't going to do it. But it's just like funny, like after I had the septic shock, like probably if that I didn't go through that experience, I would have said no to getting into the booth. 
because I'm like, no, I'm a makeup artist. This is what I do. This is what I'm good at. Mm. But I think one thing that that experience taught me is like never to say no unless you have like a weird feeling about it and you're like yeah. overexerting yourself. But like it's like God opens so many doors for you, but it's your job to walk through them. You're so right. There's like I'm sure many opportunities all of us have had where a door has been open. But it's because we're like insecure and unsure that we won't say yes to such a big opportunity. Mm, Yeah, totally. And so has music always been like a passion of yours or something that you thought you would love to do but didn't see it, you know? You know what the funny thing is? So my mom in Armenia and Russia was an opera singer. Wow. Um, My brother, if you hear him sing, like you'll be shook. Like his voice is insane. So I've been raised in music. My aunt is like a a pianist and my uncle is a guitarist so i've been raised in music like my mom's family is like a musical family Mm. but like my whole thing was dance i danced since i was five years old like i did classical ballet till i was 18 years old oh my god and i like competed in dance competitions i didn't know this yeah I like post videos about it. Is there anything you don't do? No. Oh my god. <laughs> no, bitch. Mm-mm. I love it. I mean, now that I like have a house, I feel like I'm a carpenter. <laughs> I'm a plumber. <laughs> um, so many careers yet to be found. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all I'm coming. A, I'm gonna like you know try those avenues as well. <laughs> but I think that just growing up around music and dancing Mm. like I've always had like rhythm and I've always known that and I think anyone that's ever known me it's like yeah this is not a no-brainer she's the littest one always (laughs) and she's like dancing the most can out dance anyone and then do this and do that she has so much energy and she knows every single lyric to every single rap song what did you guys think and I'm like, thank you. Because <laughs> so like some people are like, we're so shocked. I'm like, really? really? <laughs> are you? <laughs> Have you not seen my twerking videos? Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> are you really that shocked? <laughs> but um, I think that my musical background like mm. gave me probably the confidence. Because like I was like, oh, yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been hearing this. Like it's like not a big deal where I know like a friend that's been recording for so long and hasn't like debuted like their first single because they're like so unsure about it where yeah. like I went and recorded five times. I was like, okay, let's go. Wow. Yeah. Walk in the park. Oh, let's my go. Word. And I was like, if people like it, they like it. They don't, they don't. It's like me expressing myself and yeah. who cares? And while I was doing it, I really thought it was going to be a one-time thing while recording and like writing and doing all this and like really putting down on paper and like, putting it like how I'm such a big fan of like putting your message into the universe so you receive. Yeah. Like I was like, I can only say positive things in my lyrics Mm. because I've been given this opportunity. Like, what do I have to say? I want to say good things. Like, I don't want to say stupid things. Like, yes, we can all talk about jewelry. Yes, we can talk about money. Mm. Yes, I can throw throw bands at everyone yes this and that but it's like doesn't it take somebody much like bigger than that to like set all that aesthetic aside where Mm -hmm. it helps them like blow up faster because of clout and to be like let's talk about spirituality and my aura and i'm a pretty zen bitch (laughs) hit him with the bell Bell. (laughs) i know it (laughs) yeah so it's like i was like i want to do that and then with the stuff following up that i've been working on again it's all positive messaging positive words it's like my own version of gospel it's like my gospel i don't think we're ready for it we're, we better had be i mean i am so excited i know i'm really excited too but it's like i would have never taken the chance like see how i was talking about like why me why would this happen mm. to me it's like it was meant to happen yeah. to you for you to have opened your eyes wow. because your eyes you were living with your eyes closed that's a lot to actually even take in isn't it to even think about It's taken me three years to like really break that all apart. The beginning of last year is when I went on like my spiritual journey. Mm. And I was like, I want to seek like the best shaman. And like, I want to talk to people that are like monks. And Mm. I want to talk to priests. And I want to talk to mullahs. And I want to talk to rabbis. Where I started going to like a non-denominational church where it's like 
I'm Christian and I actually got like a tattoo of the cross after my experience on like my ring finger on the vein like means married to my religion Wow. but like when people like see this they're like oh you're married to your religion I'm like no I'm married to my beliefs Mm. like and like as long when I like look down at that it's like it's a reminder like be kind you've been through it you've been through a dark space like keep pushing forward you can do it like you cheated death Mm. you've been given a second chance like you can do anything you want to do so it's like fun to look down at my finger and it's like you're that bitch keep going well it's really amazing to see that you've come through such a dark patch of your life and come out how you have shining like you really are i mean with your new single wish and well you opened for diplo on new year's eve which looked like a party and a half it was so so much fun thank you and i actually fell down a flight of stairs Two weeks before my Stop. performance. You had a boot on. I wondered why you yeah. had a boot on. I twisted, rolled, and fractured my ankle. <sighs> no more accidents, please. But it's like so... <laughs> when it happened and like my manager was there, he's like, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do with you? And it's like, I'm that girl. Accidents happen to me all the time. <laughs> We need to like, bubble wrap you. Yeah, I'm like bubble girl. Literally, I need to li- <laughs> bubble like, girl. <laughs> I need to be like a hamster in like a wheel, like just like rolling around. Like, what would you do if I like pulled up and I like popped out with the whole <laughs> ball around me? And I was just like, hey guys, sorry, I can't get out of my ball. I'm gonna do this podcast in a ball <laughs> because I tend to hurt myself. <laughs> I'm very clumsy, but then I swear that wasn't my fault. I don't like I've never fallen down a flight of stairs in my life. And um, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> like, I Wait, literally was it on the performance. No, no, oh. it was two weeks prior, prior. to that. It was okay. for another event, and I just like my friend was there, and he's like, "All I saw, I saw you slipping, and you're like falling all weird, and your purse flew across your head, and oh, all no. I'm looking at was like the items in my purse fly out, like one by one, and all you hear is like, fuck, fuck, fuck." <laughs> Like, where's my lip gloss gone? <laughs> yeah. Like, literally all the containers in my purse. And I was like, shit. Like, and he's like, you can hear you cussing as you're falling. Like, but I knew you weren't cussing because you were falling. You were cussing because you were looking at your bag fly across. And so, like, before he even, like, ran up to me, he, like, ran up to my bag. He's like, don't worry. I got the stuff. Oh, and like, you were like, I... fine. Whatever the pain is, I'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah. You've got my bag. So then he's like, are you? are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I think I am. And I tried to get up and I was like, wait, why is my ankle not working? Why can't I put my foot down? And they're like, maybe you just like hurt it a little bit. I'm like, no, even when I hurt myself, like I can keep walking. Like there is something that happened here. I like attended the event literally. Oh my God. I sat down the whole time and like I had (laughs) to be interviewed, but in front of a crowd. Oh God. Like with my like, ankle like that and the producer of this project that I worked on was just like honestly like thank you so much for staying I I know like you fell you hurt yourself this is what like sets you aside from other people like where they would have left you stayed Mm. and then I went to urgent care after that and they're like you fucked your ankle up and they're like so do we cancel the performance like what is it that we do because how are you going to perform when you have to have a boot on yeah and I was just like, we'll figure something out. <laughs> It'll be fine. Keep it going. Yeah. And I'm like, the show must go on. That is that is you. The show must go on. Yeah. Literally. That's probably one of my favorite quotes <laughs> that I live by. The show <laughs> must go on. So I was like, is there anything I can hold on to? <laughs> and they're like the DJ booth. I was like, perfect. I'll hold on to the DJ booth <laughs> so I don't fall. And I'll like. I'll just sing live, like, no big deal. And then, like, even the people involved are like, you're just going to sing live like that? I'm like, isn't that the point of being a singer (laughs) or a rapper? Like, so you sing live? (laughs) And they're like, no, just, like, some people, like, need this and they need that. I'm like, "Mm, I'm fine. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Like, it's not... If I couldn't do it live, why am I releasing it? Exactly. Yeah. You know, like Mm -hmm. it was kind of like that kind of moment. I was like, wait, I just put myself in an industry that I don't fully understand. So like Mm. maybe I should calm myself a little bit like before making comments. So like 
one thing I learned is like not a lot of people sing live and wow. I mean I get it if you're like this incredible performer and you're like dancing and doing cartwheels and backflips yeah. like it's kind of like near impossible but like for me I was just like no I'm just gonna stand in one place and I'm probably just gonna scoot back and forth like and like <laughs> shake my hip I can probably sing live like it's not that much energy it's taking out of me but then like some people like in the comments were like you didn't even dance I'm like bitch wait until you fucking see me dance <laughs> I'm gonna land in the splits on your face <laughs> But like, <laughs> but like, it was a good first experience. Like, yeah. obviously, like, first song mm. within one month, you get booked for a performance. For sure. That doesn't happen. Yeah, it's amazing. It's incredible. Yeah, where like in the beginning of that video that you're talking about, like mm. I was like crying because I'm like, I feel bad. I feel bad for people that have tried their whole life and they don't get these opportunities. Mm. And I remember talking to my mom about it and my mom's like, what are you saying? You've worked so hard your whole life. Maybe this is like God blessing you in a different way. Yeah. Like you've done so much with makeup, like just because it wasn't singing you worked hard at, like because it comes to you naturally mm. doesn't mean that you didn't work hard and you do deserve it. You do deserve success because it doesn't matter like which form it's coming. It's mm. still coming. I mean, I'm just lost for words. I could sit here and speak to you all day and I'm sure Thank there's you. a million other questions I, I could ask you and I want to ask you, but I think this is a nice way to round the podcast now is just to kind of ask you, what's coming? You've kind of said that there's an, there may be an EP or an album coming this mm -hmm. year, do we think? Yes. What, what else is exciting happening for Harish? Because I know whatever, whatever it is, is going to be incredible. I'm dropping another company. <laughs> How do you even find the time? <laughs> Girl, I don't wow, sleep. Wow, congratulations. Like, I don't sleep Thank 24 you. hours. <laughs> wow. Thank okay, you. tell us about that. That's incredible. Can't really talk about it, but okay. um, once it's out, it again, it's like everyone always expects to know what it is. Yeah. And then I hit them with the bell. Um, that's it. <laughs> no more. I know. But it, it is something that helped me um, heal myself after what happened, like just talking about narcotics, like mm. why I was like so heavy with like, please don't take drugs like that yeah. there's like a different solution to taking like more of a natural route with that okay um so it has a lot to do with like my journey and what's helped heal me and like make me so calm because mm -hmm. I had so much like PTSD afterwards like as you can imagine yeah. and like that's something people don't talk about too like after mm -hmm. surgery like now I had to have like a simple procedure done where they I had like an ulcer on my esophagus but they had to put a camera down and they had to put me to sleep i was like no yeah no. <laughs> and they're like not. what no we need to i like put it off for like such a long time and they're like we need to put you to sleep so you don't oh. throw up yeah and i'm like the last time i got put to sleep something bad happened to me like please just do it while i'm awake they're like you're gonna throw up everywhere like you have to be asleep for this and I'm like, no, like, I'm going to make my heart stop. I'm going to have so much anxiety, like, when you put mm. me to sleep. And then so, like, finally I was like, okay, like, I'm just being stupid and I'm being so dramatic. Just suck it up. The show must go the on. The show must go on. So then they did it and I got over that, like, small thing of, like, somebody, like, giving me an anesthetic. So I was like, oh, it's fine. But, like, it has something to do with that okay. and that nature. Um, an EP, yes, coming, working on it. Can't wait. Um, and I'm like writing my own lyrics. So it does take a little bit more time, I feel like, when that's the situation, because it's like kind of easy to take songs from people. Mm. But then I realized, <clears throat> and I think my vocal coach helped me like realize this too. I just recently wrote a song, and it's probably the first one that I wrote all by myself without wow. like any help like the harmony the cadence everything like I did myself and I went in for my first vocal lesson and I did it and he's like you're ready to record like it sounds like it's oh ready God. and I'm like what's the difference between that and the other ones he's like because you didn't write the other ones like you know what your voice needs to sound like to make the word stand out yeah. like you know the message and the intent behind each word because you wrote it so I think that like it'd be smart for you to write 
everything mm. from now on versus like taking somebody else's message that you feel iffy about mm. and then put it out there. So I think that basically what we did is just I'm going to write every single thing and put it out. I did the creative direction for my last music video, so I'm getting oh, ready to shoot another one soon. Wow. So there's that and see where is ever evolving yeah. and thank you guys so much for supporting like a starter company i dropped it last summer and it is like seasonal sunglasses mm-hmm. like are not year round but we have so many fun stuff coming up for spring and for summer um i'm excited to see them and i'm still doing makeup and i'm doing youtube so whatever i mean it's gonna be a million things yeah. going on but there's a lot of massive yeah. things to look forward to then you've just yes. got your new house like you were saying before and I mean this may be a silly question because I don't know how it would be physically possible with everything you've got going on but is there a man in your life at all no I'm single no time no time <laughs> you know what the funny thing is though I think that I'm not knocking anyone that's in a relationship yeah. but sometimes whether you're man or female it's not like it's a little bit of a distraction from what you should be concentrating on, especially like I'll like see some of my friends like, oh, I'm not taking them seriously. I'm like, so why are you giving them their, your energy? I, mm. I'm confused. Like you're wasting your time there where you can be working on yourself. And all they're doing is just taking your confidence because like they're making you feel some type of way. Because if they made you feel so great and amazing about mm. yourself, like you'd marry them yeah, and they would like get down on one knee. So yeah. it's not that. And there it's like all excuses. Like, mm-hmm. why are you wasting your time? So I think with that situation, I like really put it to the side. And I was just like, if somebody comes on the same level that yeah. I'm at, then, and they're like willing to understand everything that I'm like sacrificing and everything that I'm doing with my career, then great. But like most of the time, that's not the case. Like they'll come into your life and they're like, You can't go to this event. I don't want you doing this. You're posting too much of this. It's Mm -hmm. like, then they start taking away who you really are as a person. And I think that I didn't know who I was as a person until the past two years. Mm. And I think that I want to get settled into my skin first before I have someone coming around and throwing like strong opinions my way. You don't need a mom. I mean, you do it all by yourself. You are like everything. (laughs) I'm my own daddy. Yeah. (laughs) It's been absolutely amazing getting to know you today. I was so excited and I mean, you've exceeded all my expectations. It's been Thank incredible, you. just your energy so nice and everything you. about you. Um, I hope that everybody enjoys listening to this podcast as much as I have enjoyed sitting here and speaking to you. I hope they didn't get bored and click away. I mean, you're still there, aren't you guys? Hi, everyone in the background. Hello, <laughs> my friends, my little YouTube friends. Was hey. that a good one? Yeah. <laughs> Haruj, it's been incredible. Thank you so much for joining thank us you. on PLT Behind Closed Doors. And thank you so much to everybody for listening and watching. We will see you next week. Bye, Bye. guys.